Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a very pleasant night to you, my precious pack, and welcome back once more to Vega Conflict. Hey, I didn't open it by saying that the game sucks right off the bat. <laughs> so, we have new content to cover, well actually quite a bit, since I've been missing out on covering it. And I figure I'll start with the most recent introduction to the game, which is the Inheritor Dreadnought to the Retrocider Faction. And I'm just going to nickname them all the Retro Faction, because that's just easy to remember and fairly easy to roll off the tongue. Before I go into the stats of it in the workshop, which is where you're going to get it from, I'm going to go over my fitting, and stuff like that. Also, this is a return video, because it's been a little while since the last time you saw me doing anything in Vega, and yeah, I've been just a little bit busy. And we'll be going over these next. Just not in this video. But, what can you expect with the Inheritor Dreadnought? Well, with just two weapons, it's got just shy of 200,000 damage per second due to the twin fire arcs that overlap in the front. And this is only with minimal reusable items. Mostly it's focused on the armor, and in the gameplay that I'm going to show you in just a moment, the only difference between this and this is that I did not have the Surge, whatever its name is, I'm not even going to bother trying to look into it right now. It wasn't present. So in the gameplay you're going to see that it can't be activated or anything like that, that's not a bug, that's not a glitch, I just didn't have it at the time. <clears throat> so, stats wise with the fitting I have, nearly... 1.5 million shielding on the lower side. Health-wise, over 3 million hit points, easily, as you can see. Repair time, standard as with most tier 8 and above dreadnoughts. Range, almost the same as the previous. It's just slightly larger, if I'm not mistaken. The last one was about 1,500 meters, and this one's 1,750, but this is a bit of a chunky vessel, as you're going to see. Fleet mass currently, it's ma it's nearly maxed out. It's got like 2,000 I could use, but I wasn't going to put any lower level weapons on it. Because I wasn't going to waste the time fitting it, because I needed to use it in the last event, and it did fare pretty well. In both auto and manual control, and as you're going to see in the manual control, it works just fine. You can go through most of the targets with the fitting that I have, you just have to spread them out a little bit. I only have three different targets that I was hitting, but I can show a fourth one, if need be, in a different video. But speed, it's barely standard. I don't remember anything different, but then again, I haven't been paying attention to my vessels for the past roughly two years, because I've just slowly lost interest in the game, because it's a little bit on the boring side. On to the modifier side of things, this is where things get... Oh, wait. Oh, they did fix it. Before, all of these were doubled, and they were down here, so that's a nice little change, I realized. But the Inheritor is all about salvaging vessels on the battlefield. So unlike the faction trait, which is the experimental salvage, which is basically just salvaged we um, technology that's repurposed for the vessels, this actually has an active salvage ability for rangers, titans, and fighters. For the rangers, you'll receive a damage increase for destroying them. For titans, you'll receive a shield damage increase. And for fighters, you'll receive a weapon speed increase. So any projectile-based weapons will... they'll prove they'll more or less be faster in combat. So destroy a fighter, and your reward is you'll hit the target a little bit more reliably because the weapons are speeding through space just that tiny bit faster. And this, ben this bonus actually gets the largest bonuses later on because we'll go over the mark upgrades in just a minute. Now, it has increased damage against specters. It has 400% armor by default, which is interesting, which is a benefit. It's plus 400% armor health. So any armor you strap on, it's going to be Basically, just multiply the value by 5, and that's your new number. Damage per second, rather than having a 100% boost, it has a 125% boost, and at Elite, as you'll see, it has a 250% boost. Weapon mass is fairly standard, and as you've probably noticed already due to looking at the various little things, it does not have spawns, which is completely fine by me, because it makes up for it in other ways. And in here, which is something that annoyed me the first time I saw it, because I always thought that things like this should always be in the resistance slot, because that's exactly what they are. But it resists 25% of all damage that's inflicted to it by Astral Barony vessels, 
buildings, whatever they're going to be using, if it's from the Astral Barony faction, it's just a flat damage reduction. And just like all Dreadnoughts, it is 100% resistant to stasis. Now, under its actual resistances, we have flat energy resistance, kinetic, and explosive, so basic meta resistances of 20% across the board. It has alien, plasma, and blight nebula resistances, which we haven't seen in a while, or at least I haven't been paying attention, and I don't know why they continue to do this, because we haven't seen them. And your standard dreadnought resistance values. And then down here, all the way at the bottom, we get specter resistance of 25%. So we have a 25% astral barony and 25% specter resistance, and most of the targets currently consist of either a mix of astral barony vessels and specter vessels, or outright complete astral barony vessels. But the mixed resistances do make up for something that I will mention in a moment. But let's take a look at the upgrades next, specifically the Elite. Let's take a look at that Ranger bonus. You get a 30% increase against damage against ships. With the Titan, you get a 35% shield damage increase. But here's the big one. You get a 100%. That is a double weapon speed bonus. So whatever your weapon speed's value is, it's now suddenly double that. And that is not accounting for anything that increases the projectile speed to begin with. It just doubles the basic value, if I'm not mistaken. Now that's a huge one that means you'll be able to hit targets more reliably. Okay, so at Elite you get 9 weapon slots, 6 armor slots, 6 shield slots, you get your second resistor slot. Oh, never mind, you only get one. I thought it had two. But then you get a fourth experimental salvage slot, which I currently don't know what I'll do with mine, because as you probably saw from the fitting, mine is mostly focused on firepower and rotation. It will then receive another bonus to mass. Its maximum mass will be boosted up by 36%, which will bring it to the standard that most dreadnoughts are at tier 9 and above. Well, tier 8 and above. Cargo becomes a standard for just a high value. Sector speed gets that high level boost. You get an additional 100% armor health boost. A 100% um, shield boost. And you get a 15% per second shield recharge value. So the higher you can get the shielding, the more you can get back per second, which is a nice thing depending on what type of targets you're fighting. You get an additional 15% off weapon mass. 15% off armor mass, and 10% off shield mass. Not bad overall, and then here's the rest of that value that I said for the damage per second. Bring it to 250%. Now, who wants to see what it can actually do in targets from the last event? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut over to those now, and I'll switch over to commentating on them. This is the reusable item target, the most recent. This is for the charge beam that they're giving us, which is a long-range beam weapon that has 3,000 to 9,000 meters of effective combat range, which means that anything within that value will be able to be targeted and fired upon. Now, I just want to say, I don't mind how the Dreadnought looks, but remember what I said. It's a bit of a chunker. It's a very, very thick vessel, and I'm just... I both love it and hate it at the same time. <laughs> but, as you're going to see, most of the targets won't give it an issue as long as you don't try and let them swarm it to death or anything like that, and most of these targets, oh, a little bit of a glitch there in the video, that's a, dis that's a disappointment. But, um, as I was saying, for the most part, it won't have any issues as long as you target certain vessels, or if you want to full auto with them, most of the targets, you can simply break the vessels apart by pulling back just that little bit, and then just let the AI fly in the rest of the way, and you'll be able to do just fine. In this target, I recommend manually flying, because sometimes the breakers could give you an issue. Bring your shields down, depending on if you have a correct shield type or not. But as you can see, it just vaporizes them in one shot. Now, the ones that do the most damage in this fleet are the two rangers right there that you can see, because... Look at that hefty hit that they can give. I know I'm not using the proper shield type, but that's also doing health damage as well, so they hit pretty hard. So, you can disregard most of the other stuff, and even in full auto, this target is only three clicks. You fall back, and then you click the two destroyers, because falling back allows you to take on the breakers and stuff like that. Now, 
This target you might recognize if you've already hit some of the newer targets for the Mark III and Mark IV for the new Ranger we got. I can't even think of its name at the moment, but it'll have its own dedicated video fairly soon. Just have to wait on that. But once again, you can do the same thing. Just in full auto, if you decide, you can just fly back just a little ways. If you center the camera over your dreadnought and then just right click or however you aim your dreadnought on mobile, just right click slightly above its own portrait down in the bottom bottom left, more towards the middle. And just right click, drag it, send it backwards, and then just have it aim back towards the fleet after it's moved back. And for the most part, you can full auto them and you don't have to interact with it any more than that. So basically just align the camera. One click and you're done. You basically just walk off, make some popcorn, get yourself a sandwich, have a drink or two. Whatever you want to do. And for the most part, it does all of this alone. You don't have to focus anything or anything like that. But I mean, I was sitting there recording the video, so why not just have a little bit of fun, focus fire, and see what it can do. But again, these are just the two weapons it has, which is the Diversify Missile, and I can't remember the name of the driver weapon at the moment. Man, I... I literally have no notes or anything. This is, this is me getting back into the game to record for all of you. <laughs> I am glad that I was mostly caught up, though. And just like in the reusable item target, I was thinking of targeting the destroyers because I thought they were going to do heavy damage. And then they did that, and I thought, oh, that was a waste of time, so I could have just full out of that, and it would have had basically the exact same result. Oh, and free repair time, in case anyone didn't notice, because... For the most part, I was able to go through each of these in full auto for free repair time. And finally, the Mark IV and Mark V target from the last week event. I could have waited a little bit longer to make this video, but I'm getting antsy to start pumping out videos again, as you could probably tell. And this one's not going to be the most heavily edited, just to be able to get out before the end of the month so I can start getting stuff out and getting ready for the next month's content and whatnot. But similar situation with the previous one you can full auto it once again with the dreadnought with the fitting I shared by simply centering it over it right clicking over the portrait swinging it around and you're good you can literally just once again walk away go have a conversation for like two minutes and you're good because all it is is you separate the target out by splitting the vessels up so that your, you know, your vessel has time to destroy each of them well I mean the inheritor has time to destroy each of them and you're good to go and again, I only did this because I was sitting there and I just wanted to focus fire on some of the things to make it look like I was playing the game despite the fact that 95% of the time outside of this, I just full auto. That's how I got my elite fleets. I full auto. With basically minimal interaction. It's just set up the target, walk away. But I'll go back to the base in just a moment once this fight's over, and I'll do closing thoughts of what I think of the Inheritor so far, what I think of the experimental scrap that's able to be put on it, because, the, I mean, the salvage, the, the experimental salvage system is interesting, but also a little bit boring in the fact that they took away so many of our equipable items to introduce it to us, which will be a subject of a different video. I've got a bunch of videos planned. <laughs> uh joys of returning to a game that you just didn't like for nearly two years and then you're just coming back. You still don't like it that much, but you're still going to talk about it. Alright, let's head back to the base now, everybody. Alright, time for the closing thoughts and then I'll get you all sent on your way and I'll get back to work on the next video, which will be covering the Destroyer, well, the Ranger. So, what do I think of the Inheritor so far? Well, it's just like any other Dreadnought for the most part. Only normally in Mark 1, they're not as useful as this one is for some reason. It... I, I can't say that exactly because there are still certain targets that they just stomp it, but for the most part I was able to use it in the event because I was actually fitting the Dreadnought and waiting for it to be finished fitting so I could start refitting other stuff so I could actively participate in the last event. And it was two days into it that I actually got the Dreadnought out, so I basically lost two days of farming, and I completely made up for it. In the final two days of the event, I completely farmed up ten of the Charge Beam and a full set of Mark III and Mark IV for the new Ranger with just the Dreadnought, so that was interesting, but I'm going to need to refit the rest of the fleets because 
I'm not just going to throw them in the garbage bin now that we have the Dreadnought, I'm going to make use of them, so... I need to finish fitting them and whatnot. But, final thoughts on Dreadnought? Good vessel, overall. Could use a few different touches here and there in regards to how it could be playing. But, not a bad ship. I can recommend trying to farm it, so long as you have the ability to farm it. And... There are a number of people who have already made videos or showcased how to farm it with just a single bulwark. So I'll leave that to them and I'll hop off and I'll get focused on the next video. It's weird being back and it's weird talking like this again. <laughs> but anyways, be safe out there my pack. Happy hunting, and as always, I'll see you later on.